Welcome to Does It Hold Up? I'm Mike. I'm Kirsten. Armando. Shane. I'm Doug. Today our show has grown. I forgot I was part of this show today. (laughs) (laughs) So, we had to bring Shane in because Armando's joining us and we couldn't let the millennials outnumber... The old crusties. So, <laughs> hey, Mike can't add. So two or, and two is two is apparently greater than two. <laughs> yes. So there's three of us. Shane well, can't be even. Come on, no. can't be even. Can't, can't be, be even. even. <laughs> <laughs> be we are That's definitely great. odd. So all right. yeah, you we just got three. You guys certainly are. Hey, Grandpa Doug going like, all right, come on, on track. Yeah, <laughs> stay on track. Trains was wrong time. Are <laughs> oh, they the right trains though? <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. Today. We, as usual, I, sh- I guess you tell them the premise again. Again, we are watching, me and Doug and Shane this time, are subjecting these millennials to stuff we loved in the 80s. This week it's Lady Hawk, which is something that's, that we've been wanting to do for a while. We haven't been able to find the movie. Turns out the library had a lot of copies. Well, the library had a lot of copies, so. <laughs> that's where they all went. That's <laughs> they have seven copies. Wow. Yeah, at various branches. No wonder I can't buy this anywhere. <laughs> yeah. The whole library has them all. All right, so uh, Doug and I, Shane, you've seen this movie back, right? Oh, yeah. Back in Several the day. Several times. So we love this movie. It's Rucker Howard. He was yeah. like the... And Matthew Broderick, right? Yeah, Matthew Broderick. And Rucker, Michelle Pfeiffer. And Michelle Pfeiffer, that's right. Man. Yeah, it's a... yeah, Rucker Howard is a quintessential 80s B-movie actor. Um, if you don't know who Rucker Howard is, because you're young. Yeah. <laughs> he was in a ton of B-movies... Man, even up through, he was in, uh, what was it, he was Hobo with a Shotgun is probably the latest, <laughs> latest thing I remember him in. You ain't not like me. A hobo with a shotgun. Yeah. Uh, which is it's like super, that's like a C movie. <laughs> yeah, I was always a big fan of Blind Fury. Put your phone, you blind! Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, Blind Fury. He was in, uh, oh, he was, he was in, uh, Sin City. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Who so. was he in Sin City? He was a preacher. A preacher? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was such a big B movie star. He gets bit parts in A movies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's <laughs> because he's well known. Now, you two have not seen Lady Hawk. Is no. that correct? I have not even seen the cover art for it. Ooh, look at that. Michelle. I have now. <laughs> Michelle Fiverr, Matthew Broderick, and a hawk. That gives me absolutely no frame of reference. There you go. There's well, a there's lady a and, there's and there's a hawk. But then why is the hawk in his head? <laughs> because Matthew Broderick. I... All right, so. <laughs> what do you know about this? Okay, so um, what's the name of that girl in, um, I think it's Thundercat. No, it's not Thundercats. It's He-Man that turns into a hawk. You know oh, the sorceress? The sorceress. Sorceress, okay. I imagine the story of this lady have you guys also seen Rick and Morty? Yes. Uh, Birdman? Yes. I bird feel person. Like it's bird person. Bird person. Um, <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, he's based on Hawk from the old uh, Buck, Buck Rogers oh, TV really? series. Yeah. Okay. His whole dress and whole bit. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. All right. So old and full I of nerd references. merge those two together, and it's the story of how they came to be. Or had children. <laughs> <laughs> a hawk. But it is. It's a hawk. Well, Matthew Don't Broderick. Okay. <laughs> Matthew Broderick has sex with a hawk. <laughs> Oh. And then they have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and they name her lady for. And they name her lady for. Oh, okay. the dog for is, lady this, is, is this like a like um, what's it called? Like a thematic uh, precursor to Lady Bird. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they wrote the song. Lady Bird's about this song. You know Ooh. that Leonard Skinner wrote this. <laughs> uh, so Lady Bird's like a spiritual successor. It is. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So that one in Freebird. That in Freebird. Yeah, that's right. Freebird. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, Lady Hawk is a fantasy, uh, fantasy epic. Now, after watching Excalibur, and Kirsten really liked Excalibur, yes. so we figured another great fantasy '80s show was Lady Hawk, which we've been wanting to see this for a while. Now, I have not seen this in a while. Have you, Doug? No. No. Uh, it's uh, been it's at probably least a, been in 15 years. So this yeah. could suck. At least, <laughs> a, at least a decade. <clears throat> I don't mm-hmm. think it will. I don't it's think it will either because Rucker Howard, of course, I, mean, Rucker, I can't say that guy. Matthew Rucker. Rucker. Stuff is stuff. <laughs> I'm Matthew Rucker. He's one of my favorite actors ever. So. Who's also been in a lot of other stuff, too. So we can't yeah. really you know, go by that. But from what I remember, I love this, this But it series. all sucked less because it had them in it. That's true. Yeah. There you go. 
<laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what do you... Hey, without giving the story away, what do you remember about this, Doug? What do you... What was your... What makes you like this? Uh, well, hell yeah. There's hard, it's hard to get... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get into that without you know, giving away any spoilers. Uh, Matthew Broderick actually does a really good job in this one. Yeah. Um, his character portrayal is really good. Is it Mouse um, is his name? Yeah, Philippe the Mouse. Philippe the Mouse. Uh, I remember, <laughs> I would say probably 70% of the movie, I think. Mm. Uh, I'm pretty good idea. Uh, there's a great character dynamic between him, the priest, and the, the other characters. Um, so I think... I think you'll find it's, it's actually not only is it going to hold up you'll go wow actually that was a really well made movie all I know is that <clears throat> I stole the whole concept for a D&D game one time <laughs> D&D characters so without giving away what the conceit of the story is but uh, uh, yeah so what are you guys expecting I know you guys are besides your she already told your she half um, I, out, I know the, just <laughs> no 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 I, think, I do think that it's going to be like the story of like a super person who's able to turn into a hawk maybe nice I don't know. fight crime <laughs> <laughs> bird maybe. Man. <laughs> bird man or bird woman or maybe she bird. just goes off and lives in the forest I don't know <laughs> that'd be kind of boring she wants. I could turn into a hawk and they go into the forest well then she'd get to like figure out the dynamics of like maybe she knows what other animals speak and so she like speaks with the mice that she kills and like learns like the dynamics of nature I don't know <laughs> <laughs> wow okay <laughs> Uh, that's exactly it. That's how you, you nailed it. That's why I don't know. Don't even need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Armando. So your first time on the show. Uh, what do you think? Let's see. My 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 thoughts have been formed over the last about two and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two theories. One, it's literally just a movie about falconry, <laughs> literally. <laughs> or, and this one only because I did peek at the back and I saw what looked like a castle. Mm-hmm. But Matthew Broderick clearly is wearing a hoodie in this, so I'm now thinking it's it's like an '80s version of a kid in, kid in King Arthur's kid, <laughs> kid in King Arthur's court, <clears throat> and so that's what I'm going with. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But oh, just the so '80s version. Exactly. It. It. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say. I wonder how you guys <laughs> know <it> exactly. <laughs> hey, I need some wooden roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Shane. What do you? What would? What's one of your favorite aspects about this movie? Um, Without giving anything away. I don't remember a lot of the movie. Is um, I like Matthew Broderick. I, I remember that I loved it when I watched it. Um, and it's one of those movies where I'm like, I love that movie, but never got around to watching it again. Um, but I remember the general plot, and that was it. Like For me, most everything is about plot. So I like, I like, the, I like the premise and the themes and the way they, they brought it out. So. I remember the amazing special effects. Yeah. And Rucker Howard's giant ass sword. <clears throat> I remember that. I want to see more Rucker Howard. I remember as a kid wanting to see more of Rucker Howard. <laughs> that was me. All right, guys. Small man crush. Yeah, I like Rucker Howard. <laughs> I mean, he's no Thor, but it, you know. Yeah. Any guy from Northern Europe with blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> Yeah, Thor, Rucker Howard, John Elway, Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> <laughs> I like blunts. I was gonna say. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go watch Lady Hawk and see whether or not which of these two are correct about their <laughs> assumptions about yeah. the movie. Or are both of us. Or both of you. Or neither of us. Yeah. What? what? That can't be. That can't. Yeah. You guys nailed it. Yeah. All right, we're off to watch Lady Hawk, and we'll be back and let you know. Whether or not it holds up. Watching Lady Hawk, uh, first time in a long time for any of us seeing this. Mm-hmm. All right, as usual, Kirsten, you get the first say. What did you think? I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> <laughs> first well. of all, there were no mice. 
So <laughs> let's get that there, started. There was a mouse. There was a mouse. There was a mouse. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was an interesting concept, but the beginning part and middle part almost made me... No, not even the beginning parts. It was just the middle part. It almost made me fall asleep. I lost a skin. The eyes of a dog. Nice. There's a lot of exposition and a lot of like I don't understand what's going on. Why are we what following these people? Yeah. Like we're just he's just like following these people into wherever they go and like there's no point or reason why he's following them beyond that he wants to and there's no point to the story beyond oh he's a hawk or she's a hawk and now she's a person and he's a wolf and now he's a person. So I don't know. A lot of the middle was eh. But the beginning yeah. was really fun, and I was hoping that that was the whole thing. And the end was pretty good. Yeah. All right. Fair it's enough. Just the part that where they explain what's going on that you're like, uh. Well, it was so. Long. I can understand. It could have been like chopped up, and then we could have gotten into like maybe a plan sequence or like I don't know more reasoning as to why they've not talked to this monk or something. Or maybe or something. like even elaborate. All right, we're gonna get into the council. We're gonna do this, right. and you're gonna do this. It did seem very ad hoc. I mean, there right. was no plan for no the end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ad hoc. Oh. <laughs> oh. In that era of movies, you were expected to pay attention and did pick things up. Mm. Oh, okay. Right? Like, nowadays, a lot of movies will just explain to you what's going on. Well, it's not even like I want but, them to explain. It's just the, like, there was a whole middle where it was nothing but traveling. Like, why is he following them? And where are they going? Well, like, it, is, it is definitely a generational thing because there was a lot... A lot of older movies are slow build up in that. Yeah. Nowadays, with all, you know, very, very instant gratification to this point, so movies have to start kicking yeah. in really quick, right? That's why most big movies start off with an action scene right off the bat and then get the into something. The beginning was great, though. It was. The beginning yes. was great. It was just the middle where it was like, I don't know where this movie is going. I don't know where they're going. I don't know why he's following. Him. Why do I care? Why do I care? Yeah. You must save this hawk, he said, for she is my wife. My last and best reason for living. All right, Armando, what did you think? I, your... I enjoyed it for the most part. There were there were a couple things that always was taking me out of it. The biggest oh. one is the soundtrack. Oh my god! So much like techno, eighty synth, eighties, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was eighties synth pop. If it was, if they didn't have the synth and they had maybe a little bit more period esque music mm. to it, like for any of the galloping, like they could have, <laughs> oh my god, they could have or more, the fight scenes, they could, or you no, know, they didn't. Even, they could have had some of the synth stuff if they wanted to for the fight scenes. I would have been okay with that. Sure. Uh, I don't know if I would. Was, I don't remember. Oh, but yeah. it was just like out of place. It it, 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 it took you out of it completely. Yeah. I did like, not remember that soundtrack at all. No. I like I remember I remember this movie fondly. I did not remember the '80s synth pop soundtrack. Like yeah, they kicked it every time they started galloping yeah. or something like that, you know. And it wasn't even like you know, like first night incorporated current pop music into this into it, right? This was not like that. This was right. just out of place. <laughs> and then ah. Uh, yeah. You see, you see, medieval knight, right? And all of a sudden, keyboard comes in. <laughs> like if they if they made that as the standard, like some synthy, a little bit synthy, as like the main battle music. Yeah, I could, I could, like, okay, this it kind of fits. It's supposed to be more action. But literally, every time someone was galloping somewhere on a horse, it was synth. <laughs> That was just, it was like as if they needed to, the story to go from A to, to C, but they, there was no logical way for it to The bad cutting. B, yeah. No, bad cutting or just like weird story decisions that they had the characters do. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the cutting was, how much can I say on here? As much as you want. Okay, so after the far, the incident with the farmer. Yeah, we're assuming the they saw this at this point. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> after the incident where the farmer gets killed by the wolf. 
and he just goes up into the bar and it's like I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, I'm, and he goes to sleep. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. it's not like the next morning that they cut to. It's the next evening between him and the uh, right. and Imper- no, I'm curious. Uh, that's the little monk's name. Navar. Navar. Him and Navar. 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 Him and Navar. They, uh, he's like, hey, so yeah, about last night, can we finally right. talk about that? <laughs> so, like, we have to assume that they woke they up, did, they got it ready, the, and they didn't a, talk at all. About the yeah. dead farmer <laughs> and possibly a, de- a, a dead farmer's wife. So. Right. And, and, and where did the woman go? Yeah, they didn't even go to sleep. Like, it was, like, he, he was up in there, and then it just cut to that scene. Right. He's like, I'm seeing, I'm, it's, it was like that, and then. It, was even, it wasn't even a fake, it was just straight <laughs> cut. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> And then, so it was like that, which maybe he's like, he's, he's not talking about it. Should I bring it up? I don't know. If he had like had one of those kind asides, of moment, yeah. if he had one of those asides between those two cuts where he's like talking to himself, like he's talking to God again, right. that, that would make, make sense. It's like, seriously, it's, he doesn't want to bring up all last night. Yeah. Like, why is he, why am I not talking about this? Where'd the lady go? Yeah. Where did you go? Where'd you go last night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, Doug. What do you what What do you think? I like it. I still love that. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. John Bush Blanchett. Nice. Is it everything you remembered? Uh, there were. I mean, there were a few scenes that I was like, oh yeah, I didn't remember it happened that way. What about that something. soundtrack, man? Come on now. That I did not remember. <laughs> yeah, I did not remember the soundtrack at all. Uh, but I still love uh, Matthew Broderick's oh, yeah. character, yeah. the monk mm-hmm. character. They're so good. Him and the monk. Yeah. Yes. yes. Him and the monk are the best. They yeah. they steal the show. This is their movie here. What hey, Shane? What do you what, what about you? Yeah, it's it's still the movie I remember. I I don't think if I saw it today I would love it. Yeah. But because you saw it when you were younger. Yeah. Well, it's not even because I saw it. Like I can remember going well, the yeah, I was like eight, so eight-year-old me loves this movie. Right. So well, by definition, then that wouldn't hold up. Then if you if it's nostalgia is the only reason that you yeah I, so and you it, like it yeah it's probably not it's 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 but it is a B movie so they have to take that into account right it's no not, it wasn't at the time at the time it wasn't yeah. this is fresh after um, war games no well maybe board games definitely war after games Ferris Bueller and taking into yeah. that that whole him talking. To just himself, yeah. that's totally a Ferris Bueller. We're playing off of that. Mm. This, that um, I like people that. liking this that. came out eighty yeah. five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ferris Bueller was eighty four. Eighty four. So yeah, eighty three yeah. was War Games or eighty two, yeah. and then eighty four Ferris Bueller eighty five. Yeah. So this yeah. was definitely this was on. He was on the rise. So yeah. this was a bad yeah, vehicle. Yeah, I, I wouldn't hate it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't love. I wouldn't like it as much now. And this is the first Rucker Howard's one of his first like big. He had like his big budget starring roles, right? Yeah. Before he was star, the only thing he starred in was B movies, straight up B movies. Uh, so yeah. this was like a first for him. Yeah. So yeah. So and there were not a lot of fantasy movies in the eighties. No. This was high. This is high quality for a fantasy movie from oh, the eighties. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, the other <laughs> your other choices are stuff like Flash Gordon or Troll uh, well, um, like or <laughs> Dragon, Dragon Slayer. Early Dragon Slayer. Doug's. Yeah. So somehow was, missed Dragon Slayer. Yeah, I don't know how you missed Dragon Slayer. Uh, was, it was a big I think I've seen bits and pieces. Isn't it got some? Until Willow, it was the fancy movie of the eighties. Yeah, it's it was the, Disney. Well, and it's got the guy with the curly hair, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember bits and pieces, but I definitely don't remember. They're sacrificing, you know, village females of the dragon. You had to go. It's like, hey, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I only well, no, the eighties had, had the Conan movies, though. True, which but are that was C movies. Yeah, they were good though. <laughs> First well, one. The first, the first one. one was good. Watch Conan and Destroyer again and tell me what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> aside, from, aside from the monster at the very end of it, I, I actually enjoy it. Oh, it I mean, yeah. Well, I Conan and the Destroyer is bad. Yeah. If you like watch Conan and then you watch Conan and the Destroyer right now, you like to do a double feature, you can see <laughs> the quality <laughs> yeah. just totally drop off for the second one. Uh, but, but yeah, I, so yeah, it's. I don't know, I give it a B. Plus. All right, well, all right. So let me, <laughs> let me just say that this. I still like this movie because there's a lot, I mean, but I think like Shane, it is nostalgia that's driving me to like this. I will say, like we pointed out, Matthew Broderick and uh, The Monk were the best parts about this movie. Yes. Was, they were amazing. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer really didn't have much to do but to stand around and look pretty. Yeah. 
I mean, she's really good at that, but, <laughs> you know, she didn't have a whole lot of lines. And Rucker Howard, even, I, I didn't realize how little, how few lines he actually had in the movie, right. you know, until I watched it again. So it's just really Matthew Broderick. Yeah, Matthew Broderick's definitely the star of the he's movie. A, yeah, he's yeah, the star of the he's movie. He's intended to be. He's like the vehicle for but having everyone else do their thing. Yeah. Having watched this again after all this time, I will say the soundtrack did bother me quite a bit. The, you know, it just, like I said, it seems so out of place. It kind of took you out of it a little bit. And two, there were a few, but the farmer's wife really got to me. Yeah. <laughs> was that, that, that bother she's, anybody else? No, I just thought she was <laughs> hopping that she was doing it. Yeah. She, was like, yeah. she had like a bum, bum leg, but also couldn't speak. Yeah, it was just, yeah. she was just smiling in weird places. Like she was mad, but I mean, it was just, but in a goofy way. Not in yeah. a yeah, it kind of. If the movie stayed comedy more so, it would have fit. It would have fit exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it was not. It was too comedic for the serious take of the movie. Yeah. They're trying to pioneer rom com before they. Yeah, before and I agree they... with the yeah the, the weird cuts where the little jumps where they didn't explain stuff. Uh, and I can see your argument about it being in the middle, kind of dragging a little bit there because we didn't get exposition. Basically, drug out like we weren't going to figure out what was going on by this point, right? Right. Like. They didn't tell us the story behind them until the last third of the movie, yeah. which we've already knew at that point. We're like, all right, he's a wolf and she's right, a Right, right. We've already figured it out. Oh, wow, shocker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, all the exposition was between Broderick and the monk. Yeah. That was it. He's like, yeah, he, there was a guard yeah. and a woman, and <laughs> the bishop wanted to bang the woman, and yeah. they wanted to bang each other, so the bishop Here's cast the... a curse on him, and that's it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then the... the the monk himself betrayed him. Was the one who betrayed him. But you know, other than that, yeah. You know, and then he figured out a way to to, to cure them, right? right. Yeah. Well, no, that was another thing. I didn't see. I didn't understand why Ruck, it was only one day difference. I don't remember that that part about it. Why Rucker Howard's character was so Naval was so adamant about not waiting an extra day to kill the bishop. Right. I'm like, because it didn't seem to me like he had any trouble getting into the castle. No. <laughs> right. You know. Well, one, he didn't have any reason to believe the monk, the guy who betrayed them. Mm-hmm. Um, two, he didn't know why that it was going to be that they could be together. He's like, yeah, you'll be able to magically be together even though you haven't, haven't been able to for two right. years. But would it be worth a day? <laughs> like, literally, like, no, I'm going to go in there and commit suicide and then I want you to kill the uh, kill the hawk after I'm dead. But, like, what, is it worth it? Not worth it to wait an extra day on the off chance? And what's the big harm? Like, oh, okay, I guess... I guess it didn't work. Now I'll go and intimidate the entire city guard to let me in and go kill the bishop. Not to mention, <laughs> he, he, he doesn't trust him enough to follow his advice, but he trusts him enough to still give him a, a, the wounded hawk. Well, because he knew who she was. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, he's... he's One, he's, he's, kinda... he's, a, he's a monk, so he's probably... He knows, like, oh, healing okay. and stuff like that. And two, he's not going to be shocked when she turns into a woman. Yeah. <laughs> so he's really the only person. Yeah, and then kill her for being a witch. Yeah, you kill her for being. Look, like, better. <laughs> uh, oh wait, right. well, yeah. there we have it, guys. Uh, oh, yeah. Kirsten, or, oh, what are we gonna score this thing? I'm gonna give it a five. A five. Out of seven or Out of a ten? ten. <laughs> I give it like a. Can I give? I'm gonna give two scores. I give it like a six. Out of ten with the music, and I give it like a solid seven and a quarter without the music. <laughs> without the synth music. So six, because it has the music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Doug, what's your score? 7.5. 7.5. Doug is holding out. I'm, I liked it. I still I like, like it. And actually, I'm, I was able to tune out the music for the most part until people actually were like, oh, the music. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doug, with his selective hearing, give it a seven and a Seven and a half. All right, Shane, what are you giving it? I give it a 6.5. 6.5? It's still, it's still enjoyable to watch. It is enjoyable. I am going to give it a five and a half. Ooh, wow. Because even though... Because you're sticking the mud? No, I, I did not <laughs> enjoy sitting with this, this viewing of the movie. I I remember loving this movie. And then I watched it again. And I'm like... And I would not recommend this to, like, you know, the current... I you, would not either. You know... You want... If you didn't grow up with this movie, I wouldn't recommend it. Because it's... I don't think it holds up. That's mm-hmm. the whole point of this, is whether or not it holds up today. Yeah. I like it because I liked it as a kid. Right, mm. and I I like Matthew Broderick in it. There was a, little, a lot of great moments in it, but it doesn't age well, I don't think. And especially with that that soundtrack for me was I couldn't tune it out like Doug. <laughs> if if so. I had seen it now without the soundtrack, I would have thought they were trying to do like a 
high fantasy, almost a little bit of a comedy like spin off of like Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'd seen it now. Right. Even yeah. though you knew it came. No, no, no. Like, if, like if, it if, they, if, they, if they released now. it now. I see. Without the synth music, basically. I was like, oh, someone's trying to cash in on Game of Thrones. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, would we recommend this, Kirsten? I would not recommend Does it. Does not hold up? No. Ramona, you think it holds up? Would you recommend it to any of your friends? For under specific circumstances or like in general? Well, th- just explain it, it that you have If If I want to be like, hey, you want to watch a ridiculous movie? <laughs> 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 but that's a ring endorsement right there. Ridiculous <laughs> movie. And yes. Otherwise, no. All right, Doug. I, I would. He I would, would recommend, recommend it because yeah. it holds up for you? Yeah. Shane? I still like it. Not generally, no. No, I'm going to say no as well. So outside of Doug... They're all wrong. And Armando <laughs> in specific circumstances, yes. Yes. if there's like a solar, solar eclipse or... <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say the concept is really cool. I would it totally is really cool. read a book about this, yes. but I don't think I would watch this movie again. Yeah. Now if they remade this movie. Here's yeah, another thing. Remake this movie. Take yeah. early. Remake this movie. This is this a great is concept. Yeah. I would definitely watch this again. Well, and theoretically, this is based on an actual like legend. Uh, le- yeah, like yeah. A, a I don't I want don't want to say fairy tale, like but folklore, like folklore, folklore yeah. from the Middle Ages. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, so there you have it, folks. Unfortunately, we had another one that didn't quite hold up, unless you're Doug or Armando under certain circumstances. <laughs> so sadly, Lady Hawk, not <laughs> worth it, guys. Oh, wow. Sorry, but we had a streak there for a while. We had, yeah. we had quite a few in a row that it held up, but Lady Hawk was not one of them, guys. So thank you for watching us. Watch, or you didn't watch us, watch us, but listening to us go on about Lady Hawk <laughs> <laughs> after having watched it. Uh, if you want to help us out, you can do so by liking, subscribing, um, telling your friends about us, and if you want to support us, Doug, you're going to do that. All the stuff down in the description below. we got links to our Teespring store, our Amazon affiliate link. And Patreon, where you can get access to some of our stuff early. Mostly Ruby stuff. <laughs> yeah, most, mostly Ruby stuff. And if you didn't agree with us or have a different opinion, put it down below so we can comment and talk about why or why not we liked it or agree with you or disagree most Right. Of you. Tell them mostly to fight with Roger. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah if, you're just, if you think it held up and you really like this and you think Doug's right, <laughs> let him know because he needs the support. <laughs> so, uh, also, if you have any suggestions for us what to watch next on Does It Hold Up? Go ahead and leave that down below as well. Please. All right, guys. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Later.